uh, while, these guys while um, were recording mm -hmm. the uh, EP and came in, played some trumpet and ended up playing some keys and now we're a band. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, my name's Garza and I play guitar and I met these guys actually teaching this jerk guitar yeah. and then he fired me and then they picked, He's not good. <laughs> <laughs> they picked me up originally playing keyboard and I was terrible at that as well. Yeah, you were <laughs> so now so I'm playing guitar. <laughs> I honestly don't know why he's still sticking around. <laughs> I'm Max Shepard, I play drums in the band and I met them at a strip club in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Zach Shepard, I play bass. Um, I met these guys uh, a while back. At birth. Um, at birth, at yeah. birth. <laughs> <laughs> We really bonded because we all have like an affinity for beautiful women. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> a really awful inside joke. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna test out your jokes here. Yeah, you gotta try, man. Let's see if it works. We're trapped in a band, man. We don't know if they'll kill or not. Yeah. <laughs> and my name is Kippy, and I play pedal steel and banjo. And I joined the band after a skydiving accident. They dropped me into their house. That's yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> the land is the skydiving capital of the world. Oh, is that that's a fact. Oh, that's true. That's true. Nice. My name's Andrew Shepard. I play guitar and sing in the band Roadkill Ghost Choir. Um, and uh, I kind of, I guess, started writing songs and kind of everyone came together after I started doing that. So that's how I got into the band.
let's stop. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like I always really loved playing music, and I always took it serious, like making it. But I never had. I was I was terrified of performing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't until I think it was around 21 um, that I started writing songs uh, like more like acoustic based stuff. Um, and uh, still, I was terrified to perform uh, anything that I wrote. But I was, uh, you know, writing a lot more um, and recording uh, like full on demos in my room. Um, and then I, I forgot some promoter in Delan heard the stuff and he asked me to play. Uh, a show, and that's kind of when the band formed was around that show. But it was, um, I think, after the first few shows that we played, um, that I realized this is what I want to do. Um, uh, I just want to write music and play, and hang out all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and you found a good group. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, that. I mean, that's always the chance. That's the group. like was not the thing it, it just felt like you're being forced down a certain track and yeah. I've made music like forever like, you know, piano lessons when I was like six or something picked up trumpet yeah. before middle school um, but it was like dropping out of school and thinking that like I could kind of just do what I wanted to do and that it might work out it's nice to see that it kind of is now <laughs> Probably 
the most insane shows we've ever played. Yeah. That definitely the most people we've played to. Um, uh, like ten fold to <laughs> yeah, a lot. Like yeah. a big, big difference. Right. Really. That's how you grow. We yeah. grow from these experiences, you know. But yeah. Lots of ground. Yeah. And what, what were some of the things that you kinda of took away from, you know, going from, you know, in the fall, you know, eight months ago playing to just a couple, a handful of people to suddenly jumping on a stage with 1,500, 2,000 people in front of you, you know, or some, was there anything you kind of, you know, gained from that experience or from the bands that you were playing with, the insights and, and that you thought were, you know, interesting or helpful? I just feel like, I don't even know, I feel like we were just really lucky to be able to do it. Like, yeah. it just kind of happened and so the fact that, like, we made that, we were able to, you know, Eight months ago, playing for front of like five people, and then have the opportunity only like a, you know, eight months later to play in front of a lot of people, <laughs> yeah. supporting a really cool band that we listened to. We, I mean, it's we're kind of still processing at least I am that it even happened. If anything, for me, it's it's like um, we you kind of like learn how to just do your thing, go on stage. Like, doesn't matter if you're gonna play for you know. 2,000 people or 10 people, like we're starting to kind of come into our own, I think, which is cool. Yeah. I find it easier to play for yeah. the big, big, big videos yeah, than for like nobody. Because at, yeah, at yeah, least yeah. there's someone yeah. clapping. Yeah. Or, yeah. One cross person in the back. And you know, <laughs> I didn't come to see you. <laughs> then you realize he's just the cook. He <laughs> <laughs> just came out of just water. Yeah. 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 Do you think that experience has affected your music in any way, in the, in, or especially in the live setting? I actually, when I think when there's less people or it's like a shitty show, sometimes I'll play louder or like more fucked up on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just to try and get people's attention. Yeah. 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 You will listen to the buzz because I'm going to play it. Yeah. <laughs> Deafening levels. <laughs> Close to yeah. like not, not just closed, but, but like four like, yeah. like, yeah. 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 like tumbleweed yeah. rolling down the road, yeah. and you're just like, yeah. so, what the hell is going on? We, uh, we, you know, we, we set up and we, we, we were thinking we're not going to play for anybody, like, nobody's going to be here. And uh, it was around like uh, the opener, I, I, he started playing, and people started coming in. Was, like, people live in this town, there's actually yeah. people yeah. here. And then by the time we got there, like, or we started playing, uh, out of people like that were actually really like listening and paying attention and into it and it was the craziest experience like afterwards we all like went to some bakery and yeah there was like an after party that they had set up for us and and everybody was shaking like hands and like we're going to go to this market <laughs> 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 one weird town well, I, think, I think the guy who <laughs> booked the place <laughs> I think the guy who booked the place also ran the radio station there okay so, so like, like only like one Two radio stations. Yeah, that, they can even pick up like where they are. It's like population eight thousand, like a coal mining town or something. Right, it was way less than yeah, it was so much less than eight thousand. Yeah, so yeah. 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 But it was so yeah. I, I don't know what to expect uh, when it comes to that because that that blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the yeah. old dude too. Oh yeah, he's oh okay. yeah, he's <laughs> so cool. Yeah, yeah, we got to stay at his log cabin. And he told us we could. He just walks outside and just is like, hey. uh, so how's it going guys? You bring this cold weather from Florida with you? We're like, ah, oh, that's funny. He's like, okay, you guys wanna go smoke a doobie? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
I don't know if you could just kind of talk about, you know, some of the directions that you're thinking or that you're taking the band now, you know, that you've kind of gotten on the road, you're getting the kinks out of the road horse, and now mm -hmm. you're thinking, let's move maybe back to the studio and start recording some new tracks and stuff. Yeah. Well, I know we just heard one, but uh, I didn't know if you could kind of think, what are some of the ideas that you're kind of pushing around? Um, I mean, Rick, I think we're, I think I'm halfway through the process of uh, writing the next album. I know, as a band, I think we're going to get a little bit, probably a little bit stranger on this one. Uh, we're going to take a lot more time uh, with just sound and textures and getting it spacey. And um, since so probably not, I mean, songs like uh, "Beggars Guild." Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's going to be anything quite like that on the next album. Sure, um, and that might disappoint people. But yeah. <laughs> there, there, there will always be those elements because it, it just, I mean, it, just, it feels right. Yeah, it's part of the banjo, a lot of banjo, pedal yeah. steel, and, uh, and exactly. there, we always have that kind of twang to us because I mean, that's, that's the kind of music we write. Yeah, the origins of <laughs> yeah. the music. But, but I know, like when you know, if you play the pedal steel, it's definitely not traditional sounds that I hear, you know, coming out of the pedal steel even, you know? Yeah, I think it's cool to make that thing sound weird. Yeah. What are some of the things that you do to kind of try to kind of step it, you know, in some direction away from what people well, traditionally Most hear? people don't use that much distortion on steels. And actually, I mean, 90% of the time when you hear it, like especially like on Nashville recordings, like they yeah. actually record that stuff direct. So there's like usually not even an amp, oh, so it's just yeah. like, Pedal steel directly in, yeah. Yeah. super clean, super pretty sound.
Ed uh, for showing up and being a special guest on today's show. And um, very concerned about what may be happening later in my basement. <laughs> 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 You might get a touch of the titillator, let's just see. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be hard to edit. <laughs>